as the Earth turns on its axis away from the bright, warm center of our solar system towards the vastness of space. We reach a point called the Midnight Nexus. It is where transmissions from the dark void of our universe are most easily intercepted. These transmissions seem to be coming from different worlds, alternate realities, and even the past and the future. Dark secrets and otherworldly tales have been pieced together and are presented to you here. Welcome to the Midnight Nexus. Ghost by Randall W. Wolf. How are those eggs, Jimmy? The old man puffed on his pipe at the far end of the long oak table. I said nothing in response. I ate my plate of scrambled eggs as slowly as possible. Breakfast was the one meal a day I was allowed to be out of the basement, from 4.30 in the morning until 6 in the morning. I ate slowly so I could get out of the stink of the dungeon for the entire time. The secret to perfect scrambled eggs is a pinch of sour cream. The old man spoke with the pipe dangling from the bottom of his lip. The bastard's name is Dr. Joshua Barker. I believe the doctor part of this to be false. I have been his prisoner, or as he is fond of calling me, his house guest, for 162 days. I know this because I etch a line in the soft part of the concrete in the basement floor under my rat's nest of discarded old blankets. I keep track of the days now. The hours are meaningless. I have the same routine daily. Breakfast, dungeon, bathroom, supper, dungeon, bed. Day in and day out. That's the routine. Oh, <laughs> and the beatings in the middle of the night. I guess he gets his kicks doing that. He comes down at random times during the week and beats me with an old rubber hose off of what he claims is a 1983 Buick LeSabre that's presently parked in his backyard. He says the beatings are to help me remember my lessons. And the lessons. The lessons are just old stories from his college days. He wants me to remember every detail. So at supper time, he can start a story and I can join in like we're old lovers sharing a memory. I have to kill him. When I first arrived here, damn, seems so long ago, I came here willingly. He called it a weekend therapy session on his website. I have anger issues, or so my co-workers would have you believe. After a little incident at work, I had to volunteer for something. So, just by chance, I Google and find this place. Dr. Barker's Weekend Therapy. Free breakfast with every RSVP. Oh, Christ. If I could go back in time, I'd click the arrow for the next page. When I first arrived, I refused to eat. I only drank water. It was my way of telling the old doc to fuck right off. I got extra beatings, and after a short period of time, I could feel myself getting weaker. So I decided to clean my plate in each meal, day and night. When I would hear the bed upstairs creak up and down, I knew the old man was occupied, so I'd do push-ups. My handcuffs would get in the way, so I'd wrap a blanket around them to keep them muffled. I'm going to do it today, though. When he comes to clear my plate, he always leans in with that great big nose of his, those 1950s glasses resting on the edge of it. I can smell Old Spice, and that same damn lime green cardigan he's always wearing with the white dress shirt 
hanging from his tiny frame. He poisoned my food the first night I was here. That's the only way he got the drop on me. I used to play football. I was chunky, but I was built. I could have knocked his fucking block off, but he chose to put me to sleep. Well, I won't be sleepy today. You hungry for a good old fashioned hillbilly breakfast? Well, come on down to Uncle Ray's. Get yourself some free range eggs. That's right, our chickens are free range. They eat whatever the hell they want to berries, nuts, raccoons. I don't know what they like. They like me to run around here all day long. Come on down, Uncle Ray's free range. Get yourself some eggs. Ain't nothing better than free range eggs on an omelet or uh, maybe maybe have yourself scrambled eggs, scrammy eggs, uh, dippy eggs, all them eggs, uh, boiled, poached, broached. <laughs> yeah. So come on down, Uncle Ray's, right off Highway 509. You done, Jimmy? Those eggs all gone? <laughs> he said, rising from the table setting his pipe down and slowly shuffling my way. Yes, sir, all done, I said, dropping my fork to the plate and folding my hands in my lap under the table as I had been taught. Good lad. Eating a hearty breakfast, make sure you stay strong. Stick around for the long while. (laughs) He rubbed my hair and grabbed the plate. Once his hand was free from my head, He leaned in with that big nose of his and breathed deeply into my scalp, his hot breath creating moisture and pressure, pushing my hair down. I felt his old tongue, like sandpaper, lick my head. I leaned back and forced myself up from the chair quickly, trapping him against the wall. I bite the tip of his nose off. It rolls around in my mouth like a piece of raw hamburger. I spit it out on the floor. Hands still clasp. I beat him in the face until he drops. I take a minute. I look around. Pink mist swirling, dancing around me in the morning light. I was free. I ran to the door, and I grabbed the door handle tightly. For the first time in months, I see my face in a hallway mirror. Gaunt. My hair, my blonde hair, now white and flowing in every direction. My beard gray. Lines and scars arched across my forehead from the beatings. I see a cross in the mirror as well, hanging on a wall. I turn and walk back down the hallway, and I touch the cross, remembering something long forgotten from my youth. Romans 3.19 Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. Romans 3.19 My captor had been my God. I was ruled under his laws. And the minute I turned the tables on him, I became God. The moment I step out this door, my divinity vanishes. I become just another victim. I let go of the door handle, and I walk over to the good doctor's body. I'm pleased to see that he's still breathing. On his belt, keys for my shackles. I take them off and put them on the good doctor. The feet shackles first, then the belly restraints all securing into the main handcuffs. I drag his unconscious body downstairs and chain him to my wall. I pick up all of my bedding off the floor and take my shirt off. The blood stains are still fresh and wet. And with it, I wipe away my countdown. The days I had been in this place on the concrete, I wipe it away with his blood. I head upstairs to his bathroom where I shower, shave, and trim my beard and my hair. I go through his clothes and find socks, underwear, sweatpants, an oversized t-shirt, 
And to my surprise, another lime green cardigan. I get dressed. As I'm heading down to the basement, I see his pipe on the table. And I walk over and pick it up. There's still a nice amount of tobacco in it. I grab a match off the kitchen counter and strike it. Hold the fire to the base and watch it catch flame. I breathe the tobacco deep into my lungs and exhale. I gingerly put the pipe in my mouth with my right hand. And with my left hand, I pull out a rubber hose from the cardigan pocket. I found it hanging on the bedroom doorknob. As I open the basement door and descend into a cool, dank space where I spent many hours, I think about what our lessons will be today. Forgiveness, pain, vengeance. When you are God, when you are God, there's enough time for lesson, for lesson, after lesson, after lesson, after lesson. featured on this episode of The Midnight Nexus. The Midnight Nexus created by Jacob Thornburg and Randall W. Logan. And this episode is produced by Zombie Takeover TV Studios and Aaron Frank England.